good afternoon, uh, everybody. Very happy to be with you uh, again, uh, like uh, last year, and very uh, happy about the work that Chepa has been conducting. Um, so I will uh, try to present to you uh, in a limited amount of time the long-term vision for all areas, knowing that there are a lot of actions underneath. And my objective is basically to give you the key structure of this, of this vision and some examples of what you can find underneath, and also to highlight, finally, what uh, um, Sherpa could contribute to the long-term vision uh, for rural areas. So um, the long-term vision for rural areas is a policy initiative that has been launched in 2019 in the policy guidelines of the current uh, Commission, uh, European Commission. And uh, it's been developed using three, uh, three streams of activities, as you can see on the next slide. Uh, a big stream of activities on publication, public consultation, stakeholder engagement. So it's been really an unprecedented uh, amount of, uh, of different types of activities that have been conducted to really harvest the views of, of people. And, and this was really aimed as a listening exercise. There's, there's been an analytical stream of work. There too, we have explored across 12 themes, all aspects of rural life, trying to find the data. Um, and the third part was the foresight, which is familiar to you because with your multi-actor platforms, you have been uh, using the results of that work that has been done for the vision. And you have also, um, also uh, contributed a lot. So the, the, the work that was done by Sherpa in the year uh, last year that were presented last year was incorporated in the documents of the long-term vision for rural areas. And I would like again to congratulate the, the group in general uh, for these uh, very useful uh, inputs that you can see uh, quoted in the document. So on the next slide, um, uh, you can uh, see the, the document package that has been, um, 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 <clears throat> sorry that has been uh, adopted. So it includes a communication. So a, commission is, a communication is a policy document. It's not new legislation. It's not a new program. It doesn't come with new funds. The communication is a policy document that really takes stock of the, of the needs in a, in a given theme. In that case, uh, rural areas, their future, and their contribution to the future of, of Europe and the role they can play and the challenges and opportunities. Um, this has been adopted on the 30th of June, uh, 2021. And it comes with a series of other documents. So a staff working document that includes all the analytical and foresight work that we've been uh, doing. Um, there's a synopsis of the public consultation, which groups all the contributions that we got through a different consultation exercises and a fact sheet that summarizes uh, mainly the communication. So this you can access on the web very uh, uh, easily. And what I'm going to present to you now, it's uh, really the, the content in a nutshell. So in a nutshell, all this, um, all that we got through these, uh, this exercise, we summarized, um, we, we assembled into shared goals. So this is the core, this is the backbone of the communication. It is 10 shared goals uh, for rural areas by 2040. And if we, if we group them into four areas of work, what rural communities want to be by 2040, they want to be stronger, they want to be better connected, they want to be more resilient, and they want to be more prosperous. These are the aspirations that we, that we got from all this, uh, this exercise. Stronger is about empowerment, it's about giving people um, the, 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 the means and capacities to, to act by themselves for the challenges that they face and that we face globally. It's better access to services, it's better enabling conditions, it's better social uh, innovation and forms of innovation in general. Connectedness is about digital connectivity, super important, but also physical, I mean, roads and, 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 and mobility, transport, these sorts of things, they still uh, need to be developed uh, very much in many areas. Resilience is both about environmental resilience and social resilience, so capacity to, to face new changes, new shocks, new crises, and bounce back or, or, or forward or transform in a way that is, that is positive. And prosperous is about diversification of economic activities, sustainable food production, sustainable forestry, sustainable value chains, uh, social economy, so there's different uh, types of, uh, of, of things. So these are really the, the, the goals and you can read them in detail uh, in, in the communication. Now the communication brings elements for actions as well. And there, there are two parts, the rural action plan and the rural pact. In the rural action plan is really the part that we as the European Commission commit 
this is what we commit to implement uh, with, with the policies, the EU policies um, and, and the different uh, uh, means that we have. Uh, we uh, have inserted, uh, we have constructed this rural action plan that includes 21 uh, um, uh, thematic uh, actions, out of which nine are flagships. So what this flagship means is either a bigger action in scale or something that is a grouping of several smaller actions that together contribute to the same theme. So it's nothing very complicated. It's just bigger or, or an assembling of, of, different, uh, of different actions over time. Uh, and accompanying actions are a bit uh, a smaller scale or more in one theme, let's say. Um, and so we have these, we have flagships and accompanying actions under these four areas of work that I, that I uh, mentioned. And uh, I'm not going to read them out loud. You can do that. You'll have the slides. But the idea is really to put the spotlight in any of these policy arenas on rural areas, something that was not necessarily done before. We have a rural focus under the agricultural policy, under cohesion policy. Uh, but we need also to have this rural focus under mobility, uh, energy, uh, digital development, climate action, entrepreneurship. On all these aspects, rural areas have specific needs, and you explore them in the work you do with Sherpa, uh, and potentially interventions uh, um, or action needs to be thought differently or there needs to be a different focus, or there's not the same types of actions that are needed. Um, and so that's what we want to do with this uh, rural uh, action plan. And, and they cover a wide uh, range of, uh, of EU policies across the, across the board, really. And the services of the European Commission that work on these policies, they are uh, involved. So hopefully, for you in rural areas in the future, it should mean better policy frameworks and better uh, better activities, uh, better actions, better programs uh, in, in, in general. So a few examples, for example, um, the rural revitalization platform that we can see on the next slide uh, is, um, um, what is it? The focus there is on uh, areas facing depopulation or, or decline. And what it is, uh, it's a new platform for stakeholders and authorities to collaborate, to solve, to address this problem of depopulation uh, with a focus on areas affected by population loss. It's not the case of all rural areas of a majority, but some in some areas it's more acute. Um, and, and, and the idea is to have one place where you can find the tools, the good practices, some examples of, of communities that address that well, strategies, smart approaches, and of course, it's going to build on what has been produced for smart villages or what's been produced under a leader, territorial agenda pilots, interreg projects. So to bring it there together and have some collaboration around it. Right now, it's being prepared with a new thematic group under the European Network for Rural Development that is working on understanding the key enabling conditions to drive rural revitalization across Europe. And they are together exploring the needs uh, and developing ideas and recommendations on how we uh, should shape this future rural revitalization platform that should come live uh, in uh, 20, end of 22 or mo most likely 23. Another example that you can see on the next slide um, that um, benefits the, the, the connected uh, area of work is the flagship called Rural Digital Futures. Uh, and there, there are several levels on which this flagship works. Connectivity, so the infrastructures, developing the right technologies, uh, helping with the development of the digital skills that are lower in rural areas, and uh, also improving the, the measurement of how we progress on this digital challenge in rural areas. So for each of these four layers, there are some dedicated actions uh, either to provide uh, to, to help investments uh, in infrastructure, for example, or to put uh, really uh, Horizon Europe or Digital Europe program funding on developing the right technologies or having some specific streams of activities under the social fund uh, or, or, or rural development fund for digital skills and building a rural a component in the digital index, which is the index we have at EU level to measure progress on digital objectives. Um, um, another example uh, that you may uh, be particularly interested in is under the resilience uh, area of work. Uh, this uh, is uh, support uh, rural municipalities in energy transition and in fighting climate change. 
And what it is, is a joint work of the Commission with the Convenant of Mayors for Climate and Energy, which is a big initiative, you probably know about it, uh, with 10,000 signatories, uh, many of which are rural, so local yeah, mayors, so <laughs> local authorities. Um, and uh, there will be a new stream of work on um, on renewable energy communities under this covenant of mayors uh, with uh, technical assistance really uh, provided to set up such uh, renewable energy communities in rural areas. And we foresee a first call uh, in, in 2022. Um, so what's in it for you, for example, there it's networking opportunities through that uh, uh, initiative if you join it, technical support, links with local action groups. And, and there, you know, Sherpa can, can help because you are embedded in, in local communities. And so you can promote this activity and uh, invite the local, uh, the local community to join uh, that, uh, that, uh, that initiative and benefit from, from these, uh, these uh, things. Um, last example uh, on the prosperous area of work is about entrepreneurship and social economy in rural areas. It uh, echoes very well with the themes on which you've been working this year on diversification of the economy. There are needs that are specific for rural entrepreneurs. And there, there are several streams of work as well coordinated under the entre ent entrepreneurship, the grow uh, uh, part of the EU uh, policy. Uh, so some more clustering and networking and cooperation actions through the COSME and Enterprise Europe uh, network. Uh, the European Action Plan for the Social Economy has been published with specific references to rural areas. Uh, there's work to improve interfaces between local food and retail. There's been a specific seminar in December uh, about that and on rural retail. And there's work to improve innovative environments for entrepreneurs as well under the European Institute of Technology. So you see the idea is that there are some actions that, that exist and, and Sherpa can help because you, you have this report that can help uh, uh, inform this uh, initiative, which is in the, in the making. So it's really putting the spotlight on rural areas within broader initiative that exists already, but we're a bit place blind until now and we're trying to progress for, for rural areas. Next slide. Uh, please. So next to that, we have uh, horizontal uh, actions uh, that are not thematic, but contribute to, to improve the, the, the setup in general. Uh, rural proofing is about looking at policies through a rural lens. So each time you develop a new policy on whatever subject, question, how would it work in rural areas? What, what's the specificity uh, uh, there? So that's the general idea. Now there's a commitment to do that on major, uh, on major uh, EU legislative initiative and to try to, to um, uh, infuse that, that, uh, that, that culture of, of, of rule proofing in the policy uh, uh, making. Already we have updated our better regulation guidelines that are the, the documents that, that comment the way initiatives are developed at EU uh, level with some stronger provisions for territorial impact assessment uh, and, and rural proofing uh, strengthening. And we are working also on training the colleagues uh, on that. Very interesting, there's a new uh, ENRD thematic group on rural proofing at national and regional level as well. So if you're asking yourself at your different levels how you could do that, there's a specific activity that will provide tools and recommendations uh, for that. There's also the EU Rural Observatory, uh, which is uh, an initiative to, to improve the evidence and the data we have on rural areas. So we will centralize the collection of data that is relevant for rural areas into a rural data platform. And we will work on some uh, specific, specific themes every year. Analytical papers will be done just like you've been doing. So I think your, your thematic papers, they can inform as well the, the work of the rural observatory and the collection, the capitalization of research that you have done can also help the rural observatory. And finally, there's a toolkit on how to combine EU funds that is being uh, uh, prepared uh, as well. Um, on the next slide, you will be able to see uh, the Rural Pact. So you remember I told you uh, we have on one side the Rural Action Plan. This is what I've been presenting until now. This is the responsibility of the European Commission, but we cannot do it alone. Okay, we cannot do it alone to achieve this vision. We need the participation of everybody. And that's why on the side, I mean, next to this Rural Action Plan, we have proposed the Rural Pact, which is a process and it's a framework for interaction between all levels of governance and stakeholders on rural development. Um, and, and, and the purpose of this is to bring together 
all those who agree to the shared goals that are on the vision and want to work together towards this, their achievement. So if you, if you click one more <laughs> for the people clicking the slides, um, yes, thank you. Uh, so we have launched the process on 20th of December, uh, inviting all those who, sh who endorse the, the shared goals uh, to, to join the rural PAC community to say they agree to these goals, to promote them and to participate in shaping this pact and discussing what it should be, how it should look like, how we should act together. And, and, and the idea is that everybody at their level, in their domain, in their area, could make commitments to, 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 to the development to, 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 to in, the, in the framework of the pact to achieve the, the, the goals of the, of the vision. And so we will have a high level rural pact conference in June, 2022. And between the launch in December and June, we are in a preparatory, preparatory phase where everyone is welcome to discuss how they would see that, how they would see their own contribution to these uh, objectives that are in the vision. And after the conf at the conference, we would take decisions on these actions um, and, and, and take them afterwards, engage in these actions. So their share pack can, can help engage uh, the other, uh, I mean, your constituencies. First, we would like you to join uh, and then contribute in this exercise because you're very well placed as a science society policy um, uh, initiative. Uh, very quickly about the next steps uh, that you can see. So we are in a lot of promo a big promotion phase of the vision and also discussing it with the other institutions at EU level. Um, I've mentioned the launch of the Rural Pact and the conference. And what's important as well is in 2023, mid-2023, we will take stock on the implementation, um, first on, on the actions that are for rural areas in the current policies and in the different actions that we have foreseen under this, uh, in, under this rural vision and uh, produce by uh, 2024 some recommendations on reflections for the post, for the next programming period. This is a long-term process. Uh, we're looking not at just one <laughs> programming period, but three until 2040. And so we, we, we want, but we take stock already one year uh, or two uh, afterwards uh, to, to see how to improve uh, uh, things. And to end, um, I would like to just give you some insights on what as uh, what I would see as a, as a key contribution of, of Sherpa to, uh, to the rural vision. So you've done a lot already uh, since you started. You've been able to put the, the project at the, I mean, at really in its policy context of, of this exercise. I think it's a chance for both the vision and for Sherpa. And as I said, it's, it's a science policy society interface and, and process. So you're ideally placed to inform and pilot and feedback and take part and tell us what you think. Uh, I mean, uh, positive, negative, uh, help us improve. So that's a general statement. Um, and, and then there are, there are three main things where I think you can contribute. And I, I, I said, but I'm just uh, highlighting as conclusion, the rural observatory is about collecting intelligence on rural areas, and you've, this capitalization that you do can really can really contribute. On the rural pact, this stakeholder, I mean, stakeholder and authorities and actor engagement process for rural, uh, for for the future of rural areas. Uh, there, you're well placed as well to help us bring everybody uh, on board, and the rural revitalization platform. I think as it's a one-stop shop to, to tools and knowledge and, and, and inspirational examples, all the work you do in collecting um, um, material from both the projects and from people on the ground can also be very helpful. So uh, you can help us question what collaboration would work or not, which tools we could see, uh, which ones you have collected, et cetera. And, and on, the, on the thematic action, so the various flagship there, based on the thematic work you do as well, sometimes it can fit very, very, very well. And like economy and climate this year, for example, is very relevant and it can, it can inform. So this was just very quickly, uh, as a, a, at a glance, um, uh, thank you for your attention, uh, what I wanted to say. And I'm very much looking forward to listening to you in the different breakouts on what, um, how you see we can make it uh, happen. What are your, 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 your views on, uh, on that? Thank you very much.